Okay, so we've taken the wash off absolutely everywhere. So we've been underneath, as you can see down in here, we've got that nice sort of mottled effect and everything else like it. And at the same time, Obviously we've been popping around with the actual polishing uh, weathering sponge and literally just popping in all those areas. So again, we've done under here and we've gone around and we're just trying to give some things a more flat look, some things more a bit of a polished look, but also what you can do is when it gets dirty on the end is use that dirt for different areas, okay? So if you wanna make more of a dusty look like here, we can just pop a little bit around there. We can put a little bit in here, okay? And you can actually add as well as take away. And then obviously if you wanted to, you can polish up certain areas. I won't do it too heavily because otherwise we'll end up with a really polished spot. But literally you just come in with the actual white side, give a little bit of a rub. And as you can see down there on the back, you can get very shiny just like that. So again, it is that way of making different types of effects and everything as you make your way right the way around it. Now, as you can probably see, we are up on its gear now and we've gone through and we've popped that in. That is literally a plug-in fit. It's as simple as that. And we've put those gear activators on there. The wheels, hubs uh, and everything else, to be honest, they're not glued yet. They are just all in there, uh, apart from the nose one, because that is a bit of a loose fit and it does tend to come out. But making sure your flat spot's obviously facing down and you'll be good to go with no problem with that at all. So generally, as you can see, it's starting to look quite weathered uh, and everything. We're happy of how it's actually weathering in at the top. Again, the decals, we're just giving them a little rub every now and again, we think about it, give it a little bit more treatment just to get them to bed down, blend in as well to the actual finish we've got. Now, at the same time, we've started to bring it together. So as you can probably see here, we have actually got the actual leading edge slats on, and that is literally a straightforward job. But just test fit it first. So what you wanna do, just come along, get an idea of how it's gonna lay, how it's gonna go, how it's gonna position. When you're happy exactly how it is, for me, easiest way is just a little bit of super glue. So just down in here, I've got a little cup. Okay, we've got a little spot of super glue just down in here. And then it's a little bit drying, so it's gone quite like a gel. And that's what we want. We want the slightly thicker so it can actually grip. Okay, now that just moved or taken a bit of a hit. So we just bend that back. Simple job like that. And then all we're going to do is just going to come along and then just making sure it is sitting all correctly. And literally it is as simple as that. There's no real rocket science to this one you just literally drop it in just make sure you don't get super glue on your fingers okay and then at the same time we're just going to come in and we're just going to put this down so it's quite nice to leave a little bit of super glue hanging around just to thicken up so it turns more like a gel and that way when you drop these things on not only do they stick uh, and glue in but they bite as well okay so that just sits in there like that and pushes in so then from the underside obviously the activators go right to the front right the way down there literally just like that and again we can weather in with a little bit of a wash a little bit later on now the thing is the flaps and everything as they come into the back again a little bit of test fitting just to see how you want yours to lay in the only thing is they've all got these little activators just on the end these little pins to be honest i've been kicking them off because you can't seat them exactly where you want them to be with them in there. So, okay, once that is off, let's just get a little bit more glue on the go. Again, let it go a bit thicker, gives you a, a little bit more bite time. Okay, and then what you can do is, we're just gonna come in, just gonna put a little bit in that corner, because don't forget, everywhere's really flat and weathered, so you just have to be a little bit careful of how this is gonna sit in there. And then once that's in there, you should be able to just come along with your area and we'll just stick that in. Give it a couple of seconds to grip. Okay, and that is it. It's literally that simple. This little guy down in here. Again, let's see how it's gonna fit. Actually, that one's not too bad a fit at all. That one's gonna be okay. Okay, so again, we're just gonna grab a little bit just in those corners. Okay. And then these guys can come in. Now these are gonna need a little bit of weathering and that's the reason they're going in now nice and early. So again, making sure the flap angle is the same from the back. So obviously when we look down the back, we are looking for them both to be at the same type of angles 
literally like that, okay. So we're happy to have how that is in. So that's the flaps and slats all seated onto this one. As you can see, we've opened up the front. Now this needs to be cut into three. So actually there's a very fine panel line down in here. So what we're gonna do is slice that in a moment. The top bridge part will then come across this and then the two will gull wing sort of upwards for being in the upward position. We've opened this one as well. And at the same time, you might see we've gone round and we sprayed the interiors at the actual RLM. O2 color because we need those to show through okay so as you can see that is actually coming together really very very nicely now no problem with that at all so what we can do is as things like that are drying we can look at the Neptune system now the Neptune system is this little guy here which is to be honest pretty good uh, when I first bought the aftermarket set for this again I was thinking this would be horrible and it would be crude and it would be badly molded and it wouldn't be very nice at all, okay? But lo and behold, when you buy the kit and you actually have a proper look at it, then suddenly you're thinking, actually, that's not too bad at all. With a little bit of cleaner, I think it would be very, very nice part. So this is what we ended up with. This is all coming away. Which one is left on? We've got one hanger, there it is. Okay. So this is the Neptune aerial system as it is actually on there. So if you imagine, if you'd clean that up, it's not too bad. I think by the time you've done it, it'll be okay. But if you wanted to, we saw it earlier, you can go down the aftermarket route, which is this one here. So obviously it is a lot finer and it is a lot sort of nicer and everything else like that, okay? The dimensions are pretty much identical, but doing a side-by-side like-for-like, -like, you can actually see there isn't too much of a problem between both of them. The main thing is, is popping this guy together because it is quite fiddly and I did learn a few things doing it. So what you end up start off with is a bag literally like these. So you've got the center bits. Okay, these are the metal replacement ones which are very, very nice. Okay, then we've got a couple of little aerials. So trying desperately not to bend these, which to be honest, can be very, very difficult. We've got a couple there which are the short ones. Here already this one's getting a little kink in it because it's not liking being in these packets okay so what happens is you try and get them out like this and for whatever reason they get stuck in the bag and all these things okay so we have just managed to bend both of these you can probably see it's got a little kink on it so we want to straighten it if we can trust me I imagine they're going to get bent anyway but we can do it without breaking them okay and then this guy here now to be honest you've got to put these in the right way because I managed to actually put the wrong way round so we had the long one at the front and the short one at the back okay so make sure you do get them correct round the right way and then they are notoriously difficult to pick up as well okay let's just try and pick this guy up so you just got a little tiny hole in this guy so what you're going to do is thread the needle, so to speak. Again, this is one of those things where the first one went beautifully, second one's playing up a little bit. Okay, so that's this guy going in. So equal distances, top and bottom. And then what I did, you just come in with a tiny bit of glue and we just tap and flow, then use the other end of the stick to catch the the overspill and then a quick wipe and that will bite for its life okay and it will hang in there and stay there okay and then we can flip this guy around the other way and we can grab one of these which is the the other one and then we can try and feed that up in to the hole again and then again we're looking for distances to be the same and we'll repeat that process. So just a little bit in there. And you'll find it will bite immediately. And then using the cocktail stick just to get rid of the excess. And that is done literally just like that. Okay, and you'll rinse and repeat for the other side. Then you've got this bit, which is obviously the bit you're going to be cutting away. Okay, so obviously what you want to do is you want to take this right up to where the ball would be. And there's one off just like that. 
Okay, and then this guy exactly the same. So you go right up to that edge and then snip. So there are the bits we don't want. This is the bit we do want. Okay, now this bit here, it calls out for drilling a 0.5 millimeter hole into this bit of plastic. The thing is, this pretty much is the same type of size. There's not a lot in it. It's this one actually, which is the 0.5. You're hardly going to have any spare and trying to drill that out is going to be physically impossible. All right. So a couple of options that I played with doing this one. First of all, we tried, if I talk you through my scenarios, to actually put in a little tiny trench. So we tried to scribe a line into it. So then that line would fit in there. Now that didn't work out exactly brilliantly because you couldn't get it to lay in a straight line. Then we tried a razor saw to cut it, to split it and then sit it in there and everything else. That didn't exactly work. Then we tried to come in here with a point on a chisel and we thought we could actually scrape a little channel out and we could do it that way. And again, that didn't exactly work out brilliantly either. So in the end, what we ended up doing was cheating. So what we did, we just come in here we put this down on its edge. We've got our file. We're going to keep this nice and flat to the same area. Okay, so it's just going to come in like this. All right, and then to be honest, I did it slightly off bench. Okay, and then all we did was sand half of it away. So we caused a flat spot. Okay, so we took out half the width of that away. Okay, and then what you want to do though is just make sure that the back edge is the same as the front edge. Okay, so again, we're just gonna just like that, and then we thought, right, okay, drop a glue. Don't want tons because don't forget, less is definitely best. Okay, and then we just put this right up against the edge like this. We wait a few seconds for it to bite, and then we check our angle to make sure it's following the same curve as everything else, just like this. Then we grab a little bit more glue, and we just put a little bit, just a dash around like that. And as we can see from this edge, it's pretty much there. And then to be honest, we're just going to add another little bit of glue there. And I think once that is sprayed in and done, we'll have no difference between the two. Okay, because that will then harden up and go just the same as the others. All right, so we just put that there so it doesn't dry onto it. And then obviously rinse and repeat, and we end up exactly the same on the other side. Okay, and you can probably see this is the one that I tried all the different bits with, and we ended up sticking it on there. This guy actually went in so much easier. And I think by the time this has been painted up, because don't forget, it's going to have to be slightly mottled and painted and everything else like that, we should end up with something extremely nice. But we've built it and done it, but I'm not putting it on until the very last thing I do, because this is literally like a fly trap. It is going to hang on to you at any point, it's going to attach to its clothes. You can just imagine you've only got to look at this and it's going to throw itself and grab you. All right, so just be very, very careful with those things just like that. So what I'm going to do now is we're just going to go around, we're going to open up this canopy part, we're going to cut this open, get all of those done. We're going to fit on the gear doors, which to be honest are pretty straightforward. They are just going to go all go in, okay, and we've got all the gear doors are all painted, but you might notice none of it's weathered yet, because what we're going to do, we're going to come in uh, with all of these parts and we're going to fit on the doors all the bits and pieces in there and that top area so then we can come in with actually a enamel wash and we can actually wash the doors dirty them up things like that all in one situ with this one as we make our way through the entire build so we're going to get these parts all put on get them put into position everything else like that let it dry off make sure we're happy with it then next up we're going to come in with oils for some detail weathering things like that then we're going to come in with post shading just to like knock things around take care of things like that and then we can actually start to really bring it all together okay so we come together pretty much got everything on there so as you say we've got the actual um doors fitted on the front again i cheated slightly what i did i actually cut both sides and then bent the plastic instead of having to have it in three parts so that way you get a perfect hinge just a little bit there and we, to be honest we've given up with their uh strap system for the bars pushing up so we've just made it out of a little bit of brass rod that I had floating around in the spares bin again quick simple and gives far and better scale than the other ones we've got you can see down in here we've put the doors are all on they're all fitted in here they're all looking great okay and we've got that lovely little sort of 
pigeoned in or bow legged uh, look to the gear which is pretty good you see all the doors and everything it's all facing in the same direction which is always really handy and looks pretty smart so same time we've gone along we fitted on the rear aerial down on here so we've got the hoop and the other one and then eventually we'll put the line in and all the rest of it we have a master front canopy purely because I was terrified I'd had overspray down between the armor glass and the front part of the actual cockpit I'd convinced myself I'd ruined it so I wanted to have a look okay so from that point of view it is now all together you can see we don't have a tail sitter we have no worries and actually we're looking very very nice how we are now you might think this is looking really nice Phil no problem at all but actually we want to do a lot more weathering to this but what we're going to do is instead of taking our time which in theory you should be doing, uh, we're gonna sort of mow through it a little bit quicker and use more of a blending technique rather than a layering technique. Now, the other thing you have to imagine, this has not had a single sealer coat on this on the top. The bottom did have one very light dusty coat of clear only because it was getting rubbed away all the time being put down belly down, but we've sanded it now. So as you can see under here, we've got this nice effect running right the way through here with the sort of shiny spots and everything else. So what I don't want to do is sort of play around too heavily with anything because if you're gonna be in there doing very heavy weathering techniques, what can actually happen is you're gonna wear through it all. Now, when you go through the weathering things, there's a couple of different things you have to appreciate. First of all is the paint that your model is made up of. Now, we are a mixture of acrylic and technically lacquer based paints because we used MRP and we use the AK air series but most stuff over the top of this now is actually mrp so but we're going to be using more enamel based stuff so the enamel shouldn't affect the lacquer one and it's not going to affect obviously the acrylic at all but with all painting again if you're rubbing at it constantly going at it you know chiseling away you're either going to wear through the paint or it's going to peel because what happens is it becomes saturated especially the acrylic and you can get a peel effect all right so from that point of view you might want to pop down protective coats and all the rest of it again i'm a martyr we're not going to do that we're just going to push straight in with it now the big thing is on the underside it probably looks really nice for a jet that's just been out for a couple of days and everything else but we want to add subtle chipping and when we say subtle chipping into this we do really mean very very subtle chipping so what i'm going to do is because in theory i shouldn't have put all this together but you know it seemed a good idea at the time what we're going to do is we're just going to lay this down like this okay and then hopefully you guys will be able to see this just as well as I'm doing it here. I'm pretty sure the tail actually might just sit. It's just we've got the hoop aerials uh, and everything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a couple of pots of paint, I think, here. And let's have another one here just to hold this up. Okay. Now, chipping techniques. Obviously, there's a thousand different ways of doing the same thing, but basically, at the end of the day, you're just trying to have metal look like it's either worn through or it's physically peeling through or chipped through the surface. Now, on aircraft, it tends to be a little bit different to things like armor, containers, and stuff like that. It tends to be a little bit more localized around high wear areas, such gear doors, leading edges of things, and stuff like that. It doesn't tend to be so much where things perhaps are handled uh, or walked over and stuff. So, obviously, chipping Check your references, have a look, see how you want to go. But also remember, when you're doing chipping, it needs to be telling a story. So from our point of view, our jet isn't an old warbird that's been floating around for 100 years and has just steadily got kicked in. It is quite modern. It's just gone into service perhaps a month or two beforehand, okay? So from that point of view, we want everything to be worn at the equal type of rate. So what I mean by that is, you don't want a heavily chipped knackered underneath and all the rest of it, and it's mainly silver, but the top side actually doesn't look too bad. It's all gotta be the same same okay so from our point of view we're just going to be going in very very lightly so chipping technique I'm going to use is one of my favorites to be honest which is as simple as a little piece of sponge and some acrylic paint okay now this stuff here which is the stuff that came out of uh, obviously the aftermarket sets and things like that from um uh, who is it from sort of Aries or Eddard or anyone else like that okay you can actually get this foam now the nice stuff with this it's quite high density okay but it's not too dense because you don't want it to be just like a, a makeup sponge or something else like that because you need the little tears and the things to actually be random okay so what I tend to do is I'll put my thumb in just like this and I will tear around my thumb and I will use the torn edge that we've got just here okay so I've got enough to hold it and to dab around lightly as well as obviously it's quite a, a nice worn edge all right the other way you could do it is obviously come up and you can hook it onto some clamps okay so you could use a smaller part and just go around and do it as well for some more of those detailed areas so for instance you could get this piece again and we just tear it into two 
okay and then the cut edge is obviously the edge we won't use and you can use this now and we can just dab around and what it should do is give us a nice random effect to our paintwork as we're going to chip now this particular guy we're only going to chip it very lightly underneath here just a few little areas all right and then we're going to leave it and then other weathering techniques will come in the other thing as well is your chipping color don't come in and use something like chrome or the brightest steels and things like that. The trouble with that is what's going to happen is it's going to be so in your face, it's going to look a little bit artificial, okay? So what I'm using is things like magnesium, which is a very dark color. And down in here, to be honest, we have got a steel, but this is the actual Vallejo steel, which is a very dark steel compared to everybody else's like stainless steels or something if you were using AK, all right? So from that point of view, we'll start with the magnesium, making sure it's had a good old shape first. With these, the beautiful thing is, you can unscrew it, we're going to use what's in here. All right, so we just pop that down there, we'll move that out of the way. Okay, now to start with, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tear this again into something a bit smaller, and I'm going to use the clamp, and then to be honest, afterwards I'll run around loose. We have it just like this. All right, so when it's done, and this you can see it's got a little air bubble on it so pop this off camera because I don't want it to pop on the area but you can see that's our little color there so what we're going to do is I'm just going to tap this very lightly around the outside just like that now at the moment that's far too strong all right so then what we do is we've just come over we've got a little bit of tissue all right we're just going to dab this on as you can see that first one it absorbed most of it off Okay, so now we've got more realistic type areas. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to pop it round the doors. And this is the dark colour. Okay, so we just pop it round there. And I'm just going to pop it a little bit just down in here. And don't forget, this is supposed to be an effect. Okay, so we're just literally touching it on edges. Okay, so for little door edges things like that okay so this little door edge here we can brush it so the sponge acts a, bit, a little bit like a brush okay and we're just going to very lightly touch it on things so we're just going to very lightly popping it on so things like leading edges of doors on any way you feel it might end up getting a little bit of wear okay so we've got these little plates and things like that we've got these little plates down in here okay we've got these little guys here and as it wears off you'll get more different type of patterns now over here let me just move this around here a bit you can see it's a little bit strong down there but we're going to come in with other things which are going to sort of hide that away so I wouldn't worry about it too much, okay, but just down the sides of the doors, okay, the leading edge of these little pylons and just around the edges, okay, and then obviously we've got the, the actual engines themselves, okay, so it's just these little edges just around in here, I'm going to get the camera to play ball where it's going to lock in, okay, so we're just going to very lightly dab and obviously the engine is going to have sort of wear so we're just going to come in a little bit around the front of these and as it's drying back on the sponge obviously as I say you'll get more of a worn look so for the first couple of passes it's all about chipping now it's drying on here and not getting too hard what you can do is you can sort of change it over to sort of give more wear so you can just lightly brush against things okay so we've got these little guys just on here and generally it's just a case now of working around everywhere so if you want more of a chip look or if you want more of a, a type of worn look it just depends on what exactly you're after but this is literally all you're going to be doing all right and then we're just going to pick up a little bit more on here again over to our paper knock off the areas where it's a little bit too much and then we're just going to dab around the front of those intakes just as it probably would get a little bit of worn off 
Okay, and again, just picking slight edges. Now we're just tapping it down on leading edges of winglets and things like that. Because we're trying to recreate sort of warm as well as chipped. All right, and then what we can do is we can just come in here and we're just lightly brushing. And again, it's one of those things, it's all about sort of subtleties on this. Okay, it's going to wear off. Do a refill. Blop off. So you're just blotting it slightly. Okay. And again, around on the rear. And to be honest, I'm just going to rub it slightly on the actual rear nozzle just to get rid of some of the overspray we actually had and the wash and everything so it all sort of wears together okay just around all these edges and this is literally all you're doing very very lightly building it up right the way as you make your way through okay so once you've got that area done and obviously I'll do a little bit more in a moment what we're going to do is change sponge bits change color as we we'll grab a little bit more of that in a moment okay so we're going to come in with this which is the steel okay and then what we'll do is we're just going to grab another little piece Okay, so this is going to be a little bit more tighter because it's going to be uh, more of a, a direct action than anything else. Okay, so again, just down onto here, let it absorb off that first little bit so it's a bit more chippy-like. Okay, and then we're just going to pop around and we're just going to add a little bit more. This is a slightly stronger colour, so that way you've got sort of two-tone type areas okay and again just be a little bit careful how you come in for this it's a little bit strong still and then again we're just going to chip and we're going to just lightly put little things going on down in here okay so it's just adding Just little things. And again, don't forget you want random. So sometimes when you're tapping like this, nothing happens, and other times perhaps you'll get a, a bit let loose. Okay, that is just what we're trying to sort of achieve with this, okay? Okay, so just trying to draw a, a random type of pattern into things okay so we're not trying to you know literally put some in so areas you get that are far too much now I won't worry about it it will darken up so just down on this sort of leading edges and of the black on these tails and just on these as well, we're just simulating wear. Okay, and again, a little rub. Okay. And again, it's just a case of literally lightly building up. The reason I like using the sponge is it's far more random than if you were using uh, a brush, because with a brush you tend to be a lot more sort of localised, uh, focused in certain areas and stuff like that. Okay, but again, you can pick out and wear in and whatever you want to do. Remember, it's all fun. Okay, so I'm happy with how we're doing. A little bit of scrape, a little bit of a rub. Just a... And so if it comes off, it comes off. If it doesn't, it literally doesn't. Um, don't matter. That's what you grip too closely. OK. 
Okay, and then you can rub inside the doors just to get a little bit of, you know, metallic fleck and wear and scrub and all different things literally going on. Okay, so it's quite nice to just give a little rub over the black, just so you can just sort of give a little wear type pattern. Okay, so I'm just going to pop it around. Okay, and as you can see, it's really starting to change the look of it, but it's one of those things, it depends how it's going to catch it in the light. Okay, so that's those. And what we're going to do is just do a little bit of work. So we're just brushing very lightly. Okay, and then if you want to, you can come up and do a few little spots just up around, perhaps where you think you get bit of footfall, about panels, edges, okay, just on these leading type edges, so a little bit of brushing, just one of those things, you sort of just pop it round exactly where you want, okay, so it's just a little and subtle. Okay, again on this side, just need a little rub because obviously this is access. So a little bit of dry brushing work just in these areas. Okay, there we go. Just a little bit of a rub here and there. Okay, and I think that will probably just about do it. Pop that down in there. Actually, I'm quite happy how that has all turned out. We've got no real problems with any of that at all. Again, we're going for subtlety rather than something huge. Okay. So just a little bit of dotting going around here. Again, I would personally just keep everything nice and subtle. You want everything to be one of those things where your eye isn't seen to it. It's not drawn to it because this isn't the effect you're after, or certainly I'm not after. Um, you know, you might want it that your eye is drawn to a specific area, but from my point of view, I just want it to be a little bit subtle. So down in here, just giving a light rub. This is where we did the re-riveting, so we know it's going to be slightly raised. So I'm just lightly rubbing this area, and again, it's going to help polish things up and get things going. Again, these tailplanes, you've got to imagine you've got jet exhaust running over them and all those things. So we're just trying to simulate a little bit that's going on. Got a little bit of overspray just down in here, which I'm going to take care of with a sanding sponge. So, one of my cool new ones. Okay, so we've just got the weathering sponge here. Look, we're just going to walk him back. So as you can see, we're just knocking that little spot back just a little bit. There we go. That takes care of that. All right. So again, that's pretty much where we want to go with that for the moment. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to let that dry. Okay, then we're going to come in with some oils and some various things like that. So down here we've got AK washes, we've got um, some um, 502 oils. So we're going to do the wheel wells and all these little areas under here with sort of oil stain things like that, just to get them going. Once that's done, we can flip it over and we can do the top side. Mm -hmm. 